Uh, it must be Monday on the Audible. I know that because John Kajemi is sitting right here next to me. I'm Kim Camper, fresh back from London town in a, John, a, a, it, was a, it was a dark, dank, we got fortunate it didn't get rained on in, 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 in London on, uh, on Sunday. And I think the dankness and the darkness <laughs> and the mood consumed the Dolphins in that locker room because, John, it was an- another another tough football game to watch. There's no way of beating around the bush. And, uh, look, you know, I, I, this, this is a football team. I've been around a long time. You've been around a long time. And we want to see the best for this football team. But what we've seen the last two weeks hasn't been the best uh, by, a stre- uh, by any stretch of the imagination. And, and yesterday was a very, very dis- – John, anytime you get shut out in this league, uh, anytime you get shut out anywhere uh, it, when you play football, it's, it's a tough situation. And, and yesterday was one of those where the Dolphins – John, it just they, they just could not get out of their own way, and, and it, it's a continuing problem from the week before against the New York uh, against the New York Jets, where you know you've been around a lot, and it, it's it's easy if you know there's one there's one thing that you, you keep you keep doing this wrong. This guy keeps running the wrong right. route. That guy keeps running he the wrong keeps route. Missing the block. You can fix that. That yeah. guy, but but when every play, it's either a different guy or multiple guys that aren't getting the job done, whether they're just getting beat physically, whether it's mental errors, whether it's penalties, you know, it's been, it's, it's been two, it's, quite frankly, it's almost been three weeks of watching football where, you know, they beat their, it's almost like they're playing themselves and the opponent. Right. Because they got to try to beat themselves first and, and the mistakes and the errors and the, the penalties and stuff, and, and then go out and beat the guys that are lined up next well, to Well, the offense, it just seems like, Bo, they can't get out of their own way. And it's downright offensive to watch the offense have such a lack of synergy and yeah. communication and be able to go downfield. You watch the Dolphins play their opening drives. They look pretty good. You know, they're getting out of the way of mm-hmm. people. They're, the ball's getting in the right area. They're getting in front of people. Jay's got some room to run. But then all of a sudden, the door slams yeah. on just about everything. Yeah. And Adam Gase said today in his press conference, like you said, it's just not one position or one player. Guys are taking their turns, whether it's a 15-yard route being run at 12 yeah. or a 15-yard route being run at 18, and the ball's either coming out too early or you have to hold on to it because the guy's not yeah. on the same page, or you can't hold on to it because there's a guy in your face, or you try to get the, the game going on the ground and you're running backwards, or you're getting first contact behind the line of scrimmage before Jay Ajayi can square his shoulders yeah. up and make somebody miss. There's a lot of things going wrong with this offense that – Probably Adam Gase can't get his arms around right. because he never thought it could get to this point so early yeah. in the season. Yeah, but that's where we are. You're watching the Audible here, presented by U Health, uh, and, and we'll talk about the game a little bit. We'll go ahead and take your questions. You can send them in uh, if you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on Periscope, send them in. And, and I do have to say this, John. I know uh, with the shows here and a lot of people watch the Audible. Uh, boy, what a, what a great time in London with, with the fans over there. Uh, we had a chance to go to the Hard Rock Cafe in the heart of London, and and they were they were outstanding. A lot of guys came from uh you know from from uh, from the states a great deal from south florida but uh it, it was amazing the support and the and the amount of people there and, and it was it was really a good time really well you fun. could tell the amount of dolphin jerseys yeah. and the, and the yep. fans in pregame and, and all the way leading up to the week we've seen clips of of parties that the dolphins were putting on the organization was part of there were dolphin fans yeah. everywhere and it's just too bad that the Miami Dolphins came out and couldn't put on a show yeah, like exactly. the fans expected to see. And yeah. and I'm not going to say, you know, it's a team effort, but the defense playing pretty yeah. well. I yes. mean, if you, can get, if you can get away with what the defense is doing now yeah. and just contribute and do your job on offense, you've got a chance to win some games. It needs to get corrected very, very quickly. Yeah, and look, I agree with your defense. I thought the defense, really hard to point fingers at the defense. There's a couple things you could probably point yeah. at and say, you could have done this, you could have done you that. You Drew Brees but, but under 300 they, yards. They're and, averaging over 24 points a game. Yeah. Right? You hold them to 20, which, you know, it's not a, it's not, you know, by great, but th- this team is giving up less than 19 points a game over the, over the three, the three games. So th- that's what you you want out of these guys can they improve no question they can improve but that is certainly not the problem on this football team right now it is all and solely related to that offense and what they've got to do John and, and to me the biggest problem that that I see from where I stand and the root of a lot of problems to me is just that offensive line is not playing to the level they should play 
the guard position on the left side is just you know you, you're they're, they're they're rotating Steen in there uh they're rotating Jesse Davis, Davis in yeah. there and, and I just don't think they're I just don't think they're getting the movement they need to and you try to run the football there's penetration in the line of scrimmage Jay Cutler tries to go back and throw and, and he's getting pressured early and, and all those things and to me among all the things that are going on in that offense to me that is the that to me is the is the root of the problem. I think if you solve that, a lot of those other issues go away. And and, and then Jay Cutler also has to Jay, Jay Cutler um has to make some smarter decisions at times. But I don't I don't think by any stretch of the imagination that yesterday's game was won or, or lost because of the way no, Jay Cutler I played. Agree. I totally agree with you. Look the, the ball to the end zone, no question. You know, you throwing it to a big tight end the ball's got to be the back corner of the end zone. You can't have it short. It's in the inside. Front of the end zone. It, it's, it, no. You got to be able to place the football a lot right. better on that play. But I can take you through the first series, Bo. The ball's coming out on time. It's yep. quick yes. slants. It's running and the he football. Had on the ball much, the, long, the, much more than last week. There's timing. He had yes. time to stay in the pocket because it's catch and throw out of the gun, yep. and he's able to step in and throw. Now that first series, you, you even though you throw the interception, you become deflated at the yes. end. As a, as a fan, at least yes. I was. Yep. But you at least had something to come back with. You know that looked different. Right. At least they moved the football easily with yep. efficiency. And then you came back in the next series. You have three first downs. That's like, right. Hey, hey, we're all right. We're going to come back. We're going to get down here, and then uh, you know, and then you get the sack and, well and you, you get the sack you get penetration yep. on running and then you add in all those penalties yeah there's so many mistakes that to be corrected adam Gates probably has a a, a uh, binder yes. full of notes that, to go back just from the offensive line to the wide receivers yep. to the quarterback take your turn yeah that's where the problem lies it's just not one guy it's everybody yep. taking their turn at the wrong time yeah kevin mccord on facebook is asking what's going on with the offense that's We're trying it to, trying to get to it right now but those, those seem to be it and look i i'd like i i I'd like to see more out of Julius Thomas. I'd like to see this guy play a little faster. I'd like to see him play a little more aggressive. And I know he's not a guy who likes to, to block and get physical, but quite frankly, that pass in the end zone. And look, to me, I... Become I, a I, defender. I, I lay that on Jay Cutler. I, I, Absolutely. I, I lay the ball on Jay Cutler. It's bad ball no placement. But, but you have to become a defender at that point. In some way, bat the football down. At least make it tough for the guy to make the interception. First of all, the guy's, the guy's 6'5", weighs about 250, right? And here's a little DB. You tell me you can't muscle that guy out of the way, elbow him, do something to, to, Bo, to make a difference. The problem that, I have was he didn't even look like he was ready for the for pass. The ball, yes. You know, you know it's a fade route. Yeah. You know you're the only person that can pot- potentially catch the football. Right. And you've got your back turned when the ball's in the air. Yeah. That, to me, is a lack of concentration. Yeah. And, and it's for me... Back of the bus, who else can come yep, in and no, play? Yep. Because you got to get somebody in there that's going to do the job, not just of, of being one on one, of the entire position yep. that you're being asked to yep, play. No doubt. Uh, Periscope question, which is basically along the, the same lines, Bo. What do you think the problem is with this team? Well, we talked about the offensive line, but, but I think this team needs to find a way to get themselves to, to get themselves back to playing like a team like they did last year when they got on the roll. This is very. This is very very much like what we saw the first four games of the season for this Miami Dolphin football team, first five games of the season last year where I remember Seattle, big. I remember asking Adam, what's wrong with your offense? Can't get a first down. Got to get a first down before we move the ball down the field. And here we are. You had – we had – we had one, two, three, five, five first downs in the first series. Twelve in the whole game. Twelve in the whole game, and then three more in the first half, and, and that's it. Yeah. Until until late in the in the second half. I mean, you can't when you're when you when you're punting. All but one series in the down, uh, all but one series, or one on one where you you go out and downs. Right, uh, you, you just can't get the job done. So, but somehow they've got to find a way. And John, it's it's an old cliche, and it's and, and, you, and you use it as many you know, all the time. I use it all the time. I know, but 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 I think that's where they are right now. I think these guys got to they got to stand up in the morning, they look in the mirror, and go, hey, what am I doing? to help this team win football games instead of being the guy that helps us lose football games. I need to be that guy. And, and until guys get that attitude, and I don't know if it's, Sean, I don't know if it's, you know, all the hype during the off season and everyone's excited about the receiving core and what they could do. And then the running backs and everybody there and Hey, the offensive line with Pouncey coming back, you know, and you get, uh, you know, you get Tunsil, you put him out and he's more, more comfortable. Well, how Feeling many times, really good about what that offense was going to be. Well, how many times did we say in the preseason this is the best Dolphins roster we've seen yeah. in eight, ten years. Sure. Yeah. I mean, the talent they have on the offensive side of the football, all the free agent uh, acquisitions that they made, and all the, the defensive players that have moved around, you feel pretty good about yeah. that side of the football. 
gosh, you know, you, you take a look at the hits that the Miami Dolphins have gone through. They, they lose their starting yeah. quarterback. You lose your starting linebacker. Yeah. You lose your starting left guard, who was probably the guy you got in free agency who was playing the best during the preseason. Yeah. So there's been some, some significant changes to this team, but they still have enough talent yeah. to not play the way they've been playing over the last two weeks. Yeah, it, it, to me it's about the pl- players need to – you know, coach the, the coaching staff – Adam Gaze and the rest of the staff, uh, they can go out and show you what you did wrong. They can go ahead and show you how you're supposed to get the job done, which these guys certainly know by now or else they wouldn't be at this level playing football right now. Uh, they can they can correct all the mistakes. But until these guys look inside themselves and say, look, what I've been doing over the last few weeks is not good enough. Right. I've got to be better at what I do. Each and every individual, then then things aren't going to change. But, but I think this is going to be a week, John. They, they finally get a week where they're kind of at home. There's a there's a there's no moving around. Um, you know, even even when we came back from from um, uh, L.A. and had a little time off before didn't going feel, to New York. Didn't feel, it didn't, didn't feel you like knew you were leaving. Soon. So so yeah. So you yeah. get this week. I, I think that's going to help them from that standpoint to hopefully settle down, get into routine, and, and, and go that way. But uh, uh, they've they've got to they they've got to individually find out where. Uh, Ronnie twenty three eighty two on Periscope. Hey Bo, what did you think of Tankersley overhaul overall? I think he was targeted 13 times. Yeah. Uh, and look, the very first play of the game, Drew Brees went right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's no question. Went right there after him after the ball. I think he needs to improve, but I liked some of the things I saw out there. I, you know what I like about him? He challenges the receivers. The distance between yeah, he, the receiver and where he played. Yeah. And look, he's a, he's, a, he's a rookie player. It's the first regular season game that he's ever played in. And although he was targeted, although they went up, John, I, I got to look at and say, I, I thought that was a pretty positive performance for him. Look, he gave up the touchdown, but he was fighting for the ball in right. the touchdown. Had a pick that he could have picked on. Had his had hands, right, on, had the hands football, on the ball, the goal line. So he made a break on the ball. And, and, and those are things that, you know, for a guy that's getting his first opportunity, you, you, you're never going to improve unless you get in the game and figure out what it's like to play in this league at that speed and what do I do and what are these receivers trying to do because I don't care how much you do it in practice. It's definitely different when you get in the game. So I think with him in there, I'd like to see him get more. to Because, because I, I got a feeling that Tankersley may be the guy that the more you play, the more you play, the more he understands it, the more he gets the pace of the game, and the better he plays. I think. I, I'm just speculating on that. But right now, if I'm going to roll the dice – uh, for for the for the better part of the season, I'm gonna go with this kid and see what he can do. Well, I think watching him during training camp, he wasn't playing at a level that deserved to, to start. Right. You're right. You know, he made a lot of mistakes. He he was questioning his ability. Uh, I think he had a lot of mental bust as well as trying to catch up to the speed of the game. But that doesn't mean that he didn't make strides during that right. time. He he started. At, at a point where the only way he could go was up, and he went yeah. up, and he got better. And I think that's why he's in a position where, where he's at today. Yeah. He's the starting cornerback uh, of the Miami Dolphins. He's going to be playing. He's going to get better. It's going to be on-the-job training. But at least you felt like you got a guy in there that was battling yeah. every play. Yeah. You had a guy that wasn't going to back down, and he was going to battle. So – you're not sure Zavian Howard, you know, was banged up yep, a little bit at the end sure of the game. You're not sure what be. his status is. You've got Maxwell with a hamstring. Yep. So you're going to have to count on the rookie, Tankersley, to come in and play at a consistent Look, level. There, there's a chance that next week when you're all on the field, it may be Tankersley and Werner on the other you, side. You have or no, or yeah, one depending another. on his De- depending, status. Depending on the health and right. his status because he went out in New York with a hamstring. Right. So, But I think he was – I think he could have played if he had to uh, uh, yesterday. So, you know, I think those are the things that uh, – but, but yeah, I think Tankersley, uh, you know, young guy, I'd like, I'd like to keep giving him the chance to see what he can do. Another periscope. I got game. Uh, I got game. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, whatever. Uh, our, 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 guards, our guards are old and slow. Uh, the guard play is not good. No. The guard play is not good right now. Uh, certainly the left side, uh, you're rotating two guys in there. And I'm never really a big fan of rotating because sometimes, sometimes John, you know you know how it is. You get into a game and it, it takes you a while to get into a rhythm. Right. And, and then they take you out, put someone else in, and then you got to come back and get the rhythm again. And, and so I, I don't like the fact of rotating two guys in a spot. But but I don't think either one of the guys at that left guard position are playing to the level that they need to play to for this team uh, to be effective. And Ant, to mention, now to go along with that, you know, Laramie Tunsil, our left guard, left tackle, is not playing to the level that he should be playing. Juwan James is not playing at the level he should be playing. And so, you know, <clears throat> where you looked like you were going into the season where you had a concern of maybe that one left position. guard was going to be a concern. One, yeah. You know, there's no doubt Mike Pouncey's playing. I watched Mike a lot yesterday, and he's – Mike Pouncey's doing what Mike Pouncey's doing. A lot of people pointed at Jamon Bushrod. You know, 
J- Jermon may have his faults, but Jermon's a he's a football player. He he's battles, tough player. and he's a tough guy out there. Give me him. I, I can live with him making every, a couple every, mistakes every week. I can live with him every week. It's it's those other three positions to me that are they're really concerning right now for this football team. I'm just being honest with you guys. You ask, well, me, you ask me what I think, and I'm just going to tell you guys. When you look at an offense, that's the engine. I mean, it doesn't go anywhere without the offensive line. So you're talking about three positions out of five or three and a half out of five. That's a problem. That's a major concern for the Miami Dolphins. And if you, you know, coach said it one time, he said it 10 times today, just go out and do your job and we'll be okay. And that goes for skill positions as well as the big guys up front. Watching the Audible presented by U Health here, Kimbo Camper, John Conjemi with you. We'll keep going on through some of these questions. Um, how much, uh, Greg Reed, how much uh, blame can we lay on Jay Cutler's shoulders? Well, look, I would say one week prior uh, up in New York, I'd say you it can was, lay a lot of blame on him. I, I, I felt like he just wasn't, he wasn't stepping into his passes. He wasn't throwing the ball with a lot of velocity. He's kind of whipping it with his wrist, uh, off target a lot. Uh, was was you know was certainly under duress up in New York, and he was under under duress certainly uh, in London last yesterday uh, against. But his he looked night team. and day compared to that. But I don't I don't I don't think the Dolphins lost the game. The, the, certainly, you look at that one the interception first on yeah no problem. I I, I lay that on the both both ends of equal. It. It's equal. I, I lay it equal on Jay Cutler and Julius Thomas. Both of them had to be smarter and better on that play, and they weren't. So that that certainly lies on their shoulders. The rest of the way with Jay Cutler, I, I I can't look at what Jay Cutler did and say that's the reason. And it's funny because I I heard people on the radio, uh, written stuff or, or heard read stuff in the newspaper, and heard fans talk about Jay Cutler yesterday. I don't think that was a problem yesterday. I, I, maybe I'm stupid, maybe I'm blind, but I think if if I would put if I would list the top five things that were the biggest problem with this football team yesterday. Jay Cutler may be five if he's even in the top if he's even right. in the top five. Right. I don't think Jay Cutler played as poorly as people are saying, especially right. coming from last week where I thought he uh, first week against San Diego, you saw the good that Jay Cutler could do. Yep. The second week you saw the bad Jay Cutler. Yep. The the back shoulder throws, you know, throwing with no velocity, yep. being late, holding on to it, all the things that you do when you don't play at your best. This week, I thought he came out and he was on fire. He was on the money. He was on yep. time. You know, and as the game wore on, other problems started to affect yep. the the overall passing game of the Miami Dolphins. But it wasn't solely the quarterback. And I think Adam Gase addressed that too. There are times where Jay needs to be better. He needs to get rid of the football, not take the sack, yep. do, do some other things that you do as a quarterback. But to to solely blame him for the goose egg on the board, I think that's the wrong. The fingers are pointing in the wrong direction. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. No, no question about that. Uh, John, some other stuff as, as you you kind of look about it and what concerns you, and 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 I guess one thing to you know everyone goes well, what do they do? You know, and and, and you know I, I kind of look back. I'm, I'm kind of like looking at the the, the landscape of the NFL uh, and, and what's going on. And man, I had a lot of a lot of upsets yesterday. Again, a lot of upsets yesterday Again. for the second straight. The week. Bills win in Atlanta. The Bills win in Atlanta. Um, but. But but here's what I here, here's what caught my attention. Jets have won two games in a row. Right. Two weeks ago, the Jets before the Dolphins played them, they were the worst by bar none. They're the worst team in the league in New York. They're talking about they're already talking about the first pick in the draft, right. and we're going to get the guy from USC, Darnold. We're going to get him. You know, they're already talking about him after week two in the NFL draft. Well, they're two and two right now. Right. I, I, I think they're right behind Buffalo. Buffalo's three and one. They're two and two as as are New England. And you know what? They had their. They, their first home opener was Game Three against the Miami Dolphins, and they played like it was their home opener. That's right. And and since then they they spring they they bounce back. They have another win. Now they're right in the thick of the things in the AFC East. Dolphins haven't had a home game. This game on Sunday is going to be our season, our, our home opener for this season. And 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 I've been around a lot of home openers. And if you're not fired up, if the adrenaline's not pumping through you for your home opener, it's never going to be pumping for you. So I'm kind of hoping that 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 carries that, that over to the part, Miami Dolphins. Part of that yeah. because. And, and, and the reason I bring in the, bring the Jets in is poor as they looked in two weeks. Now all of a sudden they're not looking so bad. You right. know, you, you win one. Well, you start to get some confidence. It's much about like you. The, is, is it, I would say it's a snapshot in these last two games, John, and, and and certainly through the first half of these two games, where you kept saying, you know, geez, if one guy could make a play, mm-hmm. hit Devontae Parker and let him take it down for the score, then then the damn breaks open, right? Then we're open, now we start doing things. Said the same thing yesterday in the first half. Man, all we need is one guy, one guy to make a significant play that that, that changes the, 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 the look of this game, and, and then you go. 
And and, and it didn't happen right. either time. I'm hoping this is that game that they come out this week, play the way we know they can play, play with play with uh, you know a lot of energy, play with the enthusiasm that we've seen with them before, and play in front of their home crowd and win a football game. That may be the game that just gets them off of the you know off of this these doldrums that they're in right well, now. Well, you're right. You come back home and you get to play a football game in front of your fans that right. haven't seen you in a month. Right. You know, I, I think that that's going to bring immediate juice to yes. the Miami Dolphins. But you're asking the team, you know, that one play. Just think about it. All they needed was one third down conversion to keep drives yep. alive. They get a bad call on a pick route or a rub and route. A horrible call. It's by a the terrible way. call. So that you know you're you're going to keep momentum going there, and then defensively the ball's on the ground twice, yep. and it just doesn't pop into to the lap of somebody for a scoop and score. At least a turnover, yep. so you keep New Orleans off the board. Those types of plays need to start yep. happening for the Miami Dolphins. The third down conversions. The, the staying out of yeah. the first and 15 when you have a, a legal procedure on or offsides, yeah. you know, those types of things beat you up as a football team because it starts to wear down on your confidence and your moxie as a football player. You know, you're always coming out. Now you've got third and 25 and you've got eight guys lined up 20 yards from the yeah. line of scrimmage. I mean, that was like Optimus football yeah. yesterday, but that's the situation that's New Orleans in. played into. Yep. But the Miami Dolphins have to stay out of the penalties, yep. the first and 15s, and first and fives on the other side to make it more difficult on the opponent. The first couple drives where they were moving the football, they were doing pretty good on first down. In fact, really through a lot of the game, they had some pretty decent first right. down runs that put them in position where you know now it's second and medium, third and short, and, and then but then they but as the have, game wore on, they didn't have a penalty. They, it they, was they third and short. seven, exactly. Third and eleven, exactly. third and fifteen. Early on, you're in good position. The longer the game went, the longer yeah. it was, okay, here we go. You know, that you're third down and you're third and 12. You got to throw it or right. try to figure out a way to get the job done. Hey, you're watching the Audible presented by uh, ba- by U Health. Uh, Kim Bocamp or John Kanjemi here with us, um, here with you today. Uh, let's go through a couple more of these questions. Then one of the other things I want to get to, John, talk about the defense playing well. Uh, the, the one thing that they do have to, they, they have to improve on, John, we've had one takeaway That's in three right. games. Uh, and, and this is a defense that worked all offseason and priding themselves on, 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 Turning the football over, taking the ball away. Uh, that's got to become part of their repertoire. They, they've got to become a football team that goes after the ball aggressively. And part of it is they've been playing quarterbacks that have been able to get the ball out of the, out of the pocket quickly. Catch and throw. Catch and throw. You know, been a little too loose on coverage. Got to tighten the coverage up. And, and look, I'd rather see a guy challenge a football – you know, challenge the ball in the air, and if the guy catches it and beats you downfield for another 15 yards, so be it. Rather than be, be you know, give the have, easy have, have, have an catch. easy cushion yeah. off the guy, let him catch it, and then you chase him down the no, field No, I agree, yards. and I think that's what you're going to get if you are able to create that pass rush and create that that pressure in the pocket. There was times where they were really close to Drew Brees. They were yep. close to swiping the football. You almost got a strip and a fumble. Uh, you got bad snaps. You, you've got some... Havoc. Yeah. Yeah. I think Adamican Sue and Cam Wake and Andre Branch, played I thought, great. played unbelievable. William Hayes. William Hayes yeah. played great. The linebackers, yeah. Timmons, in his yeah, return, and he played like a guy that Kiko played, had been away. Kiko, Kiko played very well. was in there for about five or six tackles. Yeah. So there was a lot of good play on the defensive yeah. side. I think they're really close to Me, throwing I, a goose egg or yeah. throwing a, you know under 10 points yeah. on the other side, too, yeah, that's if they can get some help. That, that's the, my, my one critique of them is, hey, get, you guys need to take the ball gotta away. Got to get a Got to get the takeaway. Look, if your team's not going to score, your offense isn't going to score, you got to find a way to put some points right. on the board for yourself. And that's just Or at least to, cut the field in half and look, with that turnover. You look at New Orleans' numbers yesterday, and, 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 and the numbers became a little gaudy towards the end. But, look, the, the Dolphins had uh, – the Dolphin defense was on the field for 70 plays. Dolphins offense was on the field for 47 yeah, plays. That's not and good. you just can't, that's the second week in a row where that defense it just gets worn down by the end of the game because you're just out there. 47 so much plays time. for an offense must feel like you didn't even play the game. Well, John, to me, I always, I always, I always expected to play 60 plays a game. You know, that, that was kind of the number. 60 plays was about average. You may play 55-1. Right. You may play 65 or 70. But but you're not, your offense is, you know, your offense was usually keeping up and, and being in a pretty good. If you play 60, if you get 60 games in, 60 plays in a game, and you're a defensive player, your That's, offense is going to have about 62. Yeah. It's going to be balanced easily, at that point. Easily. Right? Um, for, uh, Facebook, Jordan May Romero, uh, Romero uh, what do you think the Dolphins do with Byron Maxwell now that he's been demoted again? Well, he, he, evidently he pulled his hamstring. Uh, 
Well, he's only one play away from being back in there. Yes. But I do think that Tankersley is going to get the first opportunity to be the starter yes. this week at home against the Titans. That's the move you have to make. Yep. And if Byron Maxwell gets another opportunity like he did last year and he's able to, you know, to come up and rise up and be accounted for, yep. that that's better for the defense. Yep. But right now, uh, he had his opportunity. He's going to have to sit and watch a little bit yep. and see how it goes with the, you know, the health uh, on the other side with Xavier Howard and, yep. and, and Werner and – uh, and actually, you know, the rookie Tankersley. If, if, if it was me talking to Byron Maxwell uh, and I was his defensive back coach, Luan Ramo, or if I was the head coach, I was talking to him, I'd say, you know what? Tankersley's in there right now. You got to go, you got to figure out a way to beat him out. Yeah. And you're not going to do it in the game. You got to do it in practice. If I see it in practice, we'll get you back. But right now, you're the second string guy. Right. And, and, you know, and that's on you. That's on you. That's not on us. No, but that's what the tape shows, and that's yep. what the game has shown. So, uh, you know, it's one of those situations where Tankersley is probably fortunate that you had an injury get him in, but there was pretty close to an injury or no injury, yep. you're going to get your opportunity. Yeah. Miami broker, what happened? Oh, no, let me go to this other periscope. Uh, there were a few bad calls against Miami. Why does it seem that the refs can't see what's happening? It, it was some bad calls it out was, there yesterday. Yes. The, the, one with, the one with Kenny Stills. On that, the pick. Was that, that was that was he, he wasn't even anywhere near the guy. And I think there was one on – they called on um, – on Tunsil for a face, face uh, hands, mask, yeah. and that was a bad call yeah. too. I thought it wasn't even close. Well, I, I to the the other one I questioned was the um, when they went on fourth down or the third down where they where they pulled the chains out. Oh yeah, and it was, yeah, and it was yeah. right there. You I know, know it. First I of all, I'm sitting there looking and go, wait a minute, is it the pull? Is it the, is chain? It the chain? Is it the link? Or is it, is it, does yeah. it have to just touch the end right, of, the, right. of the? I mean, it was it was that close, but I but I was standing right there and, and watching when they spotted the ball, and, and I could have sworn that ball was. Was that it was that far short? I mean, I was like right down the line, right. looking at it, and, and you know, I. It's amazing because they did it twice or yeah, three times. Yep, no doubt. Um, so yeah, but I, I think the but look, me, John, any any coach on this football team, any player on this football team is not going to blame the referees and no. calls for the game. It's just not bad calls are going to yeah, happen. We can sit there and, and talk about it, but it's not uh, that that's not uh, that's not what made this team win or lose a football game yesterday. Go back to Miami Broker. Uh, what happened with Fasano and his run blocking? I think Anthony's been blocking all right. I, I saw him I, yesterday on on, a, on the early run. I think yeah. the 14-yard run by Jay Ajayi. Anthony missed early, but I tell you, he made up for it and just pancaked the yeah. guy. So I, the one play that I was really focusing in, in on Anthony Fasano, he kind of missed early but stayed with him, yeah. stayed with him. Jay had to make a couple people miss in yeah. traffic behind the line of scrimmage. And the next thing I know, 80 was planting a guy on his back. Yeah. So it, it, it seems good. to me most of the penetration is coming from inside. Yeah. You know, because I keep looking at it and I'm, I'm looking at the, the, you know, they try. How many times did you see Jay try to bounce outside in order to get outside? He had to give up, up. He had to give up yards to get around the corner. And by the time you do that, you, you got you got no chance. It's tough, at that point. It's tough to have a, uh, an aggressive downhill running game when your back is retreating before he gets yeah. the ball. Yeah. You know, Jay's trying to hand him the ball and. Jay Ajayi almost sees guys that are free. Yep. So he's trying to back up and and yep. take the football at the same time. Yep. It's the Audible presented by U Health. John Kinjami, Kimbo Camper with you. Uh, Periscope from uh, Relevance. Uh, how much does Lawrence Timmon improve this defense? A lot. He's a beast, man. He, he's a beast. I watched him out there. He, I mean, he's playing hard. Uh, he's a tough – and he can – you know what I like about Lawrence Timmons? He he can do – he's a, he's a run stopper. He can blitz and put pressure on a quarterback. He can cover for you. Uh, he can do a lot of things. The one play where they end up calling the, the pass interference or the uh, hands to the face, face, on, the, face. on the receiver yeah. after he caught the ball. I looked at him and I thought he was too far inside of him. And I go, oh, this he guy's going to this he guy's going to turn up. the corner. But man, he picked up. He made up ground yeah. and, and and drove the guy out of bounds. And, and the guy put his and got the penalty. Got, got the penalty on him. And I thought they were going to call a penalty on Lawrence. I was, was going to be red hot on this. That'd have been the fourth one that yeah, went against exactly, the ball. Exactly, no doubt. But uh, yeah, I think I think Lawrence Timmons. I think he improves his defense. By, by his ability to play and by his toughness out there, yeah, too. Yeah, and the speed that he yeah, brings to the position. No doubt. Uh, Facebook, Sean Moriarty, is Gase addressing the mass of penalties? Um, you know, I, I think I think Adam is a guy that – I think I think he can live with penalties. I, I think he doesn't like them, uh, but I don't think he gets consumed by the penalties, you know? I, I think um, I they do. have to I improve. Do. I, Believe me, I do. My personal opinion is I think they have to improve. Yes. They have to be a much cleaner football team because when you're making mistakes, 
in penalties, yeah. the physical mistakes. It adds on to the mental aspect of it yeah. too. And you, this team's not good enough right now to overcome yeah. it. If well, this team, if this team was good enough to overcome the penalties, and you would be three and zero and be laughing right now. I believe the first drive we had back to back penalties on the offensive line. Yeah, and, and I think at one, I think we were at one point we were, we were it was like it was first and twenty five or first and thirty or something. And they overcame that. They did and got down the field, and then and then they had a. It was uh, first and twenty five. Yeah, and then we threw uh, Landry caught a seven yeah. yarder, and I, I think. You know, a slant to Parker for and then there sixteen. Was a on that for them that got you the first right. down. Right. And, and then they and then in the second series where they're going along, a three first downs, they get a penalty. They got third and thirteen. Right. You know, and there you go, third and thirteen as opposed to maybe you know third, third and, and three. three. Right. And, and so so there that makes it so to me when I say to me personally every time I see a flag come out I'm I'm, I'm pissed because. It just, you know, that to me is comes. I talked a little earlier about having to beat yourself before you beat the other team. That's what I mean. Right. Stupid penalties, penalties that help you. I mean, it's uh, ninety you know. yards in penalties. Yep. You know, that's a, that's a lot of yardage. There's a lot of hidden yardage uh, for a team that's struggling to get points on the board. Yep. Uh, Periscope Hollywood eighty thoughts on Gay's play calling should have run Jay instead of throwing the fade to Thomas. Well, I think if you I think if you would talk to Adam Gay's today, he would agree with you. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that when he wants to throw that fade, uh, he wa- he would. Now, if it was first and two, then I think that would be the right call for him. First and four, I, I think you've got to run the ball once or twice. Uh, I think you've got to you've got to try to, especially with Jay Jai. Uh, Jay was probably to, foaming at the mouth trying to yes, get the football to yeah. get in the end zone. So for me, I already have that formulated in my head. I'm going Jay Jai, and then on second down, yeah. I might fake it to him because you know he's going to get it yeah. again. Yeah. So I, I think that was probably the third or fourth or fifth best option that Coach Gase could have got yeah. to on first and goal from the yeah. floor. And we talked about that or that play earlier, and, and I would throw I would throw Coach Gaze in there. I mean, if the three people that, that you put that on their shoulder would be both Jay, it would be Julius, and, and it would be Adam Gaze, I think. Because yeah. I think if you asked Adam Gaze right now and he was sitting here and, and I know he'd be honest and say, Coach, would you like to have that call back? He would say, absolutely. Yeah, I, I do. I, when, it, when it happened, uh, you're, you're hoping that it's successful because you've got a one-on-one matchup, but for – What's best for this football team is probably giving it to Jay Ajayi yep. in between the tackles to see if he can get in the end zone. Yep. Uh, he said Doki from Periscope. I like that one. He said Doki or Dookie maybe. <laughs> I'll let you, it I'll might let, be Leon. I'll let you decipher that it any way you Leon. want. <laughs> How can the defense create more turnovers? We talked about that. Yep. That's one thing they've got to do. And you, know, you create turnovers by, by poking the ball out, by trying to strip balls. But you got to have multiple people around the ball if you're going to do that. Got to get them up, got to hold them up and try to strip them. Or your uh, your pass rushers have to come around the corner, uh, try to knock the ball out. Or, or the, you know, the spectacular, get the interceptions. I, the I think, you know, front. the coverage, once it, it has to become a little bit tighter in the secondary yep. and, and be able to anticipate some of those throws and get into throwing lanes. Yep. We've seen that happen on the other side of the football when Jay Cutler's trying to throw slants. Guys are all over the back of our receivers. Yep. We've got to be in a position to be able to make plays on the football, either at the linebacker spot yep. or the defensive backs area. Yep. Yep. Hey, John, before we go, we're going to wrap this up. But uh, it's, a, it's a pretty tough day around uh, the United States and, and I would say around the world with people that, uh, you know, with the, and, and we like to send our condolences out to the people That's right. in Las Vegas for what they're going through out there. Just another just another horrendous, horrendous uh, situation in, in our country and and. John, you say in our country, um, all over the but, world. But, but yeah, but I mean, yeah. when you look at Las Vegas, it's an international stop. I mean, there are people probably from uh, from all parts of the world that were there, and, and uh, you know, fifty eight, uh, you know, fifty eight that are that are gone, uh, four hundred plus injured. I, I mean, it's just a it's it's senseless, disgraceful. And, uh, and and something's got to change in this world. But I just want to, I think for, as, as you know, as, um, uh, for me, for John, for the Miami Dolphins, everyone involved, uh, I just want to send our wishes out there and know our hearts are with you guys. Absolutely. Uh, it's going to be a long time before, uh, before that city recovers from that. And certainly the families that have lost loved ones uh, and those that are injured, it's going to be a long time. And, and John, I heard some people this morning talking, people were there that saw it and they said, look, this is never going to go out of my head. No. You know, they, they never, maybe didn't get injured that physically but mentally it's going to be something that's going to live with them for the rest of their life so uh, these things are happening way too much we as a country we as citizens of this country need to do our part to to try to make it better uh, and stop these things but uh, 
Uh, it, it just seems to be getting worse and worse and worse. And uh, uh, so we just want to just want to let you know we're thinking about you and uh, and our well wishes go out to, to each and every one of you. So tough thing to tough thing to end on. But John, uh, we're going to end that way. And I want to thank the, our friends from uh, U Health for sponsoring the show. That's I right, thank buddy. John Kajemi for being with here today. We'll be back on Wednesday. Not sure exactly what time. Probably about four thirty there, Leon. Oh, he's not paying attention. So I don't even yeah. know if Leon's there. No, he, he's there, but he's—I don't know what he's going. Okay. He didn't get much sleep. It was—it was, it was, it was, it was a was long a tough ride home. He didn't get much sleep right. there, so he had a few cocktails when he got home. So he's probably probably got a hangover right now. Anyway, he does that all the time. All right, that's going to do it for the Audible presented by U Health. We'll see you on Wednesday. Have a good couple of days, and we'll see you then.